June is Pride Month, a time dedicated not just to parades and rainbow flags, but to profound affirmation and resistance against discrimination. The skewed Christian view of pride involves a self-centered attitude, placing oneself above others, and most critically, above God. But the LGBTQ plus community is not declaring themselves above anyone else. Pride Month was born from a necessity to stand against oppression and claim a rightful place in society, not out of a desire to dominate, but a need to exist openly and safely. It's about love, not arrogance. Let's talk today about what pride really is and how it's a powerful expression of love's triumph over shame. It's a celebration, not a sin. Would it be okay if I were to tell you that I am afraid someday? So I call you up and you call me down. Would it be okay? Well, hello and welcome to the Freed Hearts Podcast. My name is Robert Cottrell and I'm here as always with Susan Cottrell. Happy Pride Month. Happy Pride Month. Yay. Yay. June. This month is Pride Month and I know the celebrations here in Seattle are in September and but they go on all throughout the summer. But June is Pride Month, and it's this time. This time is dedicated not just to parades and rainbow flags, and but to profound affirmation of life and resistance against discrimination. Yes. Yet this beautiful celebration is often met with misunderstanding, particularly from the anti-LGBTQ, ultra-religious, very vocal parts of the Christian community. Mm-hmm. They see, well, I think they're making this whole thing up, but they they use the term pride. They see the term pride through a skewed biblical lens. You know what? As they stand in their multi-million dollar churches and drive their custom golf carts and live in their multi-million dollar mansions and $2,000 suits and and, and, and dress up at the time. So, So, you know, okay, anyway, in this case, they see the term pride through the skewed biblical lens where it's marked as sin, the very antithesis of humility. But the pride of LGBTQ month couldn't be further from this concept. It's about love, not arrogance. So first, let's talk about this misunderstanding of pride. Yeah, yeah. Many Christians and Catholics teach pride as a sin one of the dreaded seven deadly sins. Yeah, by the way, this is the start of our deconstructing of the so-called seven deadly sins. Yeah. So welcome to the table. Yes, yes, through Pride Month. And it's also, it's part of teaching of contempt as well. Yep. So, but, it, okay, if that's true, maybe we better find out what it is. If pride is so awful, maybe let's find out what it is. In fact, we're going to use Pride Month and a little beyond to look at all yeah, this, that's right. those sins, so-called just for fun. <laughs> just for fun. Let's and cover the deadly fun. sins just for fun. Yeah. Because like pride, they've been taught us as teaching of contempt. Surprise, we're going to turn them upside down. You know, I th- was thinking about this as uh-huh. we were preparing for all this. And if we, if, beloved, if we can <laughs> turn the seven, the seven deadly sins, sins on its head, deconstruct that, well, all the other 10,000 not so deadly sins are easy at that point. You know? <laughs> exactly. That's true. <laughs> so we're going to, we're going to dive into this. Yeah. yeah. So this will be life giving and freedom giving. Mm. So today pride, this Christian view of pride involves a self-centered attitude, placing oneself above others and worse again, above God. Um, does that sound familiar? Mm. But when the LGBTQ plus community speaks of pride, They're not declaring themselves above anyone else. Pride Month was born of a necessity to stand against oppression and claim a rightful place in society, not from a desire to dominate, but a need to exist openly and safely. Yeah. So what does pride mean to the LGBTQ plus community? Pride for this community is is fundamentally an act of survival. Mm. It's a declaration of one's inherent worth Mm -hmm. in the face of ongoing and often increasing adversity. 
And with that, you know, and again, the, the, the hate is increasing, the adversity is increasing, although there have been some great victories lately in, in, in pushing down these anti-trans and anti-LGBTQ laws, they're, they're coming back again. So, so this, this hate is increasing, making pride more important now than ever. I don't even know if it's increasing. It may be just getting more well, vocal. That's true. Getting more devious. Yeah. I don't think people are drawing to join this hate, you know, movement. Right. The anti-gay sides are are certainly more vocal and feel more empowered. Yeah. Um, But June is Pride Month and events take place again all the way through the summer. And these celebrations have their roots in resistance in the Stonewall Riots of 1969, which was a turning point in the fight for gay rights. Yeah. Pride... Pride is a stance against invisibility and a move towards self-acceptance that many in the LGBTQ community are denied from family or faith communities. Yes, know? yes. And many of and you... What a beautiful thing that, yeah. that standing up, that stance is. Yes. It is beautiful and empowering. Yeah. A- empowering and taking your power back. And many of you listening have been told terrible things about yourself. You've had your very existence questioned. And if you've even been acknowledged at all, you've been told that that God is disgusted by you. And many of us here are parents or whatever, and we have not experienced that. But, But many have. And what you may not have experienced is what it means to finally be able to stand up, to march, to celebrate as your authentic self. And how it, how important it is to be you. Mm. And this kind of pride is not about feeling superior, but about demanding equality, expecting respect. It's a lifeline Mm. to those who feel isolated, a community saying loudly for all to hear that they are not alone. And pride gatherings are as much of a rallying cry for rights and recognition as they are a festival of joy, joy that comes from being True to yourself in a world that tells you there's something wrong with you. Yeah. You know, I think of how, how freely, you know, watch any sporting event, NFL, <laughs> NBA, baseball, college, and you see the pride that these people have in their teams, in their university. They will face paint, they will dress up, they will go shirtless in zero degree weather with <laughs> team name painted across the, their chest. And, and and their name, fan, is short for fanatic. Right. And, and, and there's no church condemnation of that kind of pride, right. by the way, just FYI. Right. But, but, that, but the, the joy that somebody gets from being able to say, I love the Cowboys. Yeah. This is my um, team. Yeah, I this belong is my here. My team, and yeah. what, and to be someone who, again, has not ever been able to stand up or march or celebrate what just you to celebrate just something as simple as your authentic self. This is why the truth is that pride plays a vital role. Yeah, a, a critical role here. Yes. It's more than a celebration. It's an essential affirmation for those who have been marginalized. It's a powerful rebuttal to shame, the message that being LGBTQ is not a deficiency or a deviation, but a beautiful human reality deserving respect. It's a time when the community can come together to celebrate milestones and remember the battles fought to achieve them. It's a crucial moment to energize for the challenges that remain in achieving full acceptance and rights. Pride offers healing, beloved. It reassures LGBTQ plus individuals, especially the young, that they have a place, that they're seen, that they're valued. It's a profound Mm -hmm. counter message to the awful rejection and condemnation that too many still face. Yes. And pride is a call to the community that you're marching in. Mm -hmm. It's a call to anybody observing. It's a call to love. Oh my gosh. I love what you just said. I love that. Yeah. That's the essence of pride month. 
that it resonates with the very heart of what it means to love openly and freely, to love openly and freely, you know, like Jesus taught and showed us. And this is not the pride that the church teaches that scripture warns against. It's, it's a testament to love, love for yourself and love for your community. That's vital. It's what happens when people who have faced profound rejection say no more, no more, and they choose to embrace who they are with pride. And as we begin Pride Month, we're going to really listen to what pride stands for. We're going to celebrate pride for what it truly is, a powerful expression of love, love's triumph over shame. And for religious people to call you out for pride is like, here, here's what it's like. It's like they came into your room and stole everything, everything, and you with some friends, we're able to go and catch up with them and take your stuff back. And then the authorities come and arrest you for stealing. <laughs> that's what it's like when they accuse you of being prideful. And that, that's really mm. what's going on here. They've taken your sense of self, and when you come to get it back, they say you're prideful. Yeah, wow. I don't think so. That's a great analogy. I don't think so. Th- thanks. And, and here's the thing. Their attempt to dismantle you to silence you, to erase you, to destroy your sense of self, all of that is the definition of sin. (laughs) And we're going to dive into this more next week because we've got a lot to say about that, about what sin really is. But in short, we've been lied to, told that our little things, our, our humanity is sin, how we act or or just little things about us while they steal us blind, while they steal our dignity, our humanity, our sense of self, those aren't theirs to take. Mm. And we want to help you reclaim your personal power, which is where pride comes in, where pride parades come in to restructure. That's where they came from. It's where they came from to restructure, to recalibrate a sense of self and personal power. You remember the, um, the viral Karen <laughs> that it may, I think it was one of the first ones maybe that word Karen got named for, but it was the central park Karen who leveraged racism for her own gain. Remember that mm-hmm. she had her dog off leash, which was against the city's ordinance. And a man asked her to put it on the leash and she was white. He's black. And she said, I'm going to tell the police you're threatening, threatening me. And you can see it all because He happened to tape it, which was a very smart move on his part. And then she called the police and got that tone of voice where she said, there's an African-American man and I feel threatened. And she knew exactly what she was doing. She pulled on that cord of racism because she knew how it was, how it runs through all of our society throughout the entire system from the police who would answer the call and then show up to the court system, all of that is immersed in racism. And she was happy to do it because she didn't want to put her dog on the leash. She didn't want to be told to put her dog on the leash. Okay? And religious leaders do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Religion over history, not the, the good churches that are really loving people well and doing good work. We're talking about religion has been arrogant and prideful and domineering and controlling And when you say, wait, stop treating me like this, then they become Karen. And sorry for all the real Karens out there. They say, you're prideful. Now, come on, church Karens. No. Religious leaders don't want to be told they're overstepping their bounds of control, of thievery, of hurting people supposedly in their care. So they turn it on you. They say you're in the sin of pride It's exactly the same intent as telling the police, an African-American man is here and I'm afraid. They're pulling that cord of shame and self-loathing that is already woven into being queer or otherwise marginalized in our society. Like It's like calling the police. They just love to pull that cord and watch the dominoes fall. Like the emergency cord on a train. You pull that cord and all the... The trains, come, you know, the cars come to a 
grinding halt. And that's the same here. And you just hint that maybe they're being overbearing and judgmental and harmful, and they'll pull that cord and all of your gears conditioned into you come to a grinding halt as you think, am I prideful? I don't mean to be. Or well, defensive I, all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just saying what they're doing hurts me. I'm just saying they hurts me. Stop hurting me. <laughs> but they're already gone. They've already <laughs> left the train. Yeah. That's really good. Really good. So what? Mm. So what's the difference between healthy pride and sinful pride? Yeah, great question. Because we'll tell you. <laughs> healthy pride is necessary. You can't th- thrive without pride in who you are. Peace, acceptance, being good with yourself as you are. Those are, all these things are necessary to grow and to thrive. Yes. I mean, is it wrong to be proud of yourself for, for, for standing up against oppression? Is it wrong to be uh, proud of your child for, for, for something or for some wonderful thing that they've done with their heart or, or whatever it is? That's, yeah, you can't, you can't pride. do well without it. Right. You can't be mentally healthy without right. pride. Well, the sin of pride is something else. Remember, sin means that something is off, miss the mark. Something is off, whether mm-hmm. slightly or massively. Something is not quite right. Again, mm-hmm. something has missed the mark. Where pride is off, where pride goes off the rails is when we think we're better than others. When we know better. We think we know better. Yes, that's right. And that we think that we're always right. And we have contempt for those who aren't us. Does that sound familiar right now? Yeah, exactly. Again, that is the heart of the teaching of contempt, us versus them. Right. And I, well, the sin of pride is thinking, well, we're us and you're them. Right. And so you're, you're the one, obviously, that's prideful. Yeah. So I looked up s- sinful pride in Wikipedia. Bad pride, bad pride. And this is actually, um, I added to this, so it's Wikipedia plus me. But sinful pride. That's a pride, great website. Wikipedia s- plus me.com. <laughs> it's not real. By the way. <laughs> sinful pride is an excessive love of one's own excellence, unlike the healthy pride of self-affirmation. Sinful pride is to think obsessively of yourself with no recognition or appreciation for the contribution of others. Unhealthy pride pushes others who aren't self to the margins of one's existence. Those others, whether people or God, exist only to gratify that person's ego and sense of importance. Pride means to negate others and take all the credit for one's accomplishment in a, in a self-aggrandizing way. That's negative pride. Mm. And this <laughs> describes yeah. conservative religion and people in conservative religion. The teachings of contempt we've been talking about are all based on pride, negative pride. And it's the idea that I'm better than you, that you as a group, whatever group it is, is inferior, faulty, and deserves contempt and actually can be treated subhumanly because you're subhuman. That disrespect, it's unhealthy and it holds others in contempt as beneath them and undeserving of anything good Mm, and undeserving of respect. And that is not... You, that's that, not yeah, how you manifest it's, your it's, sense of self. It's, You're not doing this to people. Yeah, it's, it's, it's maddening to me to, to hear that, that, yeah. that, the, that the rules-based, non-affirming church, ultra-religious church, does that to you. Yeah. Does that to you, holds you in that contempt, disrespects yeah. you, tells you you're inferior, that you're flawed, that you're broken, that you're fallen, that you're faulty. And then when you even push back on this, they say, well, now you're full of pride. Yes. It's not pride oh to push back gosh. on people who are fed up with you, who treat you badly, who don't know your story and don't want to hear it. And, and they only want to spout their rhetoric. It's not pride to be fed up with that and to push back on it. Now, we may, you may be fed up, you know, with 
All of this. <laughs> with all of this. Yeah. yeah. And we you sometimes know, are, yeah. And you, we sometimes are. And you're already, you already know a lot of what we're telling you. You could tell them that what they want to, like when they try to lecture you, you could tell them what they're going to say because you've heard it. As an outlier, you've heard it. But has, have they heard your story? Have they heard your lived experience? No. And so. Well, they won't because that brings humanity into this. And right. That's, so what yeah. I'm saying, I guess what I'm trying to say is if they won't listen to your story, you don't have to say, well, you know, okay, if you listen to my story, I'm going to have to listen to your lecture. No, you already know their lecture. If they're not li- willing to listen to you as in your humanity and your lived experience, then there's really no conversation mm-hmm. to have. Well, in, in that situation, guess where the pride is? Right. It's not with you. Right. And it, it, so don't let a group of religious people who don't know your story and aren't interested in hearing it tell you anything about yourself that's negative. People throw accusations that are the very things they're doing. That's just yeah, human nature. Yeah. It's the ultimate projecting. So don't let them project onto you. Yeah. And once, as to say one of the things we love to say here on the Free Tarts podcast, bullshit. <laughs> we, we say yeah. with love, don't fall for this. Yeah. yeah. Don't don't let them take this beautiful celebration, this standing up and just saying, This is who I am. And we've had to work so hard and fight so many battles and it's been so painful. Yes. But we are now today in this parade or this festival or we are standing up and we are saying, here we are. I am here. I am here. We are here. We are here. We are, we are, we are here. queer. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. don't fall for this. Yeah. And they, s- they say pride this. goes before a fall. Mm-hmm. Well, accusations of pride before go before falling for it. So don't <laughs> fall for it. Right. This is a trick. Yeah. This, this, is a, this is a technique. It's a trick. Don't fall for it. Yeah. To summarize this up, healthy pride, healthy pride. And we hope you have a lot of that during June and every month of yeah. the year. Means self-respect, self-love, being happy with yourself, celebrating yeah. yourself. It doesn't mean perfection. Right. Nobody just has satisfaction. That. Yeah. And that's a great thing. Pride is a celebration. It's not a sin. Yeah. So next week, we're going to continue on a deep dive into sin, in particular, the other six supposed deadly sins. And again, your heart deserves this, beloved. You really do. You deserve to be free of this baggage, this guilt, this fear. That's why we do what we do. That's why we're going to be right here next week. And we certainly hope you are too. We love you. Yes. Even if I just, I'd want to say, even if you're over, over sin or the Bible or this, this is a deconstructing of how things are framed about you and about us and about, our communities. Right. So it's, there's a lot of power. in it. Well, and a lot of people that have been on this journey for a while, they're still, I mean, we hear it in the comments uh-huh. and the emails that we get. They still struggle with this yes. particular thing or that yes. particular thing, or what about this? Or this person said this, I don't know what to say back. Yes. Yes. So yes. this is just so you can find the peace. Yes. Uh, if it's, if you, if you have it, that's wonderful. Folks are watching that piece and you can, this will help you share it with others. You know, yeah. if you don't quite have it yet, there's like, we always say we have cookies come on this other side. We, there's a life and yeah. joy and freedom and peace more beautiful than you can ever imagine. Yes. Just stay on the journey. We're, we will be here next week. Yes. We hope you are too. Bye. Bye. Would it be okay if I were to tell you that I am afraid Someday, so I call you up and you call me down. Would it be okay? You've been listening to the Freed Hearts Podcast. We have extensive resources and vibrant, inclusive okay? community for you at freedhearts.org. Please just come say hello. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions for the podcast, just email us at podcast at freedhearts.org. Audio engineering is provided by Luke Johnson. The music is provided by Hannah Cottrell, our daughter the Grammy-nominated Saint Sinner. You can find out more about her and her music at heystsinner.com. Please share, subscribe and follow on your favorite platform, and support us if you can. Thanks for listening.